Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll be talking about are relationships conditional? Short answer, yes and no. We first have to define what conditional versus unconditional actually means. I think the idea of having someone love you based on a certain criteria, certain characteristics, if you meet this, then love is given. As well as the idea of unconditional love. In psychology, there's a term called unconditional positive regard. That's when a therapist removes themselves, sees the person objectively, not subjectively, and removes all bias in order to truly treat their patient. I think the idea of unconditional love really stems from our mo mother. I think a mother can truly unconditionally love you for who you are. And to have that in the world and expect that from your partner is kind of rare. Can your partner truly love you unconditionally? Yes, anything is possible in this world. But statistically speaking, I think someone who could possibly love you is less than 1%. Because if it was 99%, that means every single interaction, every single relationship you've ever been in, they love you for who you are and there would be no such thing as a breakup. But in this world, I think we all are a little superficial and our love is a little more conditional. I know there's a lot of content online saying like, People will only love you when you make a lot of money, if you look a certain way. And yes, while that may be true for a certain select group of people, that doesn't mean everyone. That does not mean everyone. You can't have this whole idea apply to every single person in the world. That's a false theory. A theory applies for certain groups of people. Because there's a lot of people who don't consume social media. There's a lot of people who don't even have an online presence or who don't really even have Instagram. Yes, is it fewer and far in between? Is it rare? I think so. But there are people who don't actually use the internet in the same way that I use it, in the same way as you use it. Yes, will there be some women who only love you based on your income, the way you look, what you can provide? Only based on those characteristics, but not your personality. Yes, I think that's very, very true. And if you think everyone is like that, then that's on you. And that's your subjective truth of the world. For myself, I don't think that's everyone. In the same way that I have certain conditions that I hold myself and my partner accountable. And if this really started to get bad, then you know you would end the relationship. I think it's very important to have a partner who's financially astute, someone who's financially literate, who is not in debt. I think for me, debt is a huge deal breaker because if you're gonna get married or whatever, then that that's just too much for me. That I just can't do that. And the whole idea of also taking care of yourself physically. I, you know, try my best to be the best version of myself, the strongest version of myself, as Elliot Hulse would say. And I like to go to the gym. I like going to yoga and truly actually become a man who can protect my family, the ones that I love, as well as being confident and belief in myself that no matter what happens in his life, I'll be able to overcome that. And in the same way, if I, for example, I think hardships do happen. I think hardships and shit does happen. For example, I think if you just lose your job and your partner leaves immediately, fuck. Yeah, that's relationships very, very conditional. But I think there's sometimes of a partner being patient with you, being like, hey, sometimes shit happens in this life that you can't control, but you better do your damnedest to get another job. You better be doing your best to create other revenues of income if that's important to you. And I think that really shows the strength of a man. I think that's really fucking cool. I think saying that all relationships are superficial and conditional as a blanket statement is false. You can't say that because for every case you can prove, there's also another case where I can prove to you that that's not true. And yes, is it rare to find a partner who loves you for who you are and like will not leave you? Sure, but I think you also have to do the work in addition to that of saying like, okay, I have to be my fucking best every single day because I want this relationship to work. And if your best falls short, then that's on them. But they're, that might just be a compatibility error. I think to have a successful relationship, you both have to view each other as the best possible option for each other. And you both have to have legitimate attraction. You both have to be so attracted to the other person. You have to love the way they look, their personality, their humor, their hygiene, like everything, everything about them. And I think the whole idea that both of you are not settling. If anything, you guys are rising to the occasion. I think the whole idea of like falling in love means you've kind of settled and whatever, right? But I think rising in love is also the opposite. Meeting someone who pushes you to get better. I can confidently say that when I met Hadley, I have significantly gotten better because I'm like, damn, like I really want to maintain this relationship and grow it and I want to be the best possible version of myself for her and also for me, right? And I know that I don't have to do all these things to get love. Like I know that, like I could literally do 10% of what I do and receive the same amount of love, but it's because I hold myself 
to a very high standard because I truly believe that I'm the best possible option for her. And the things that I do allow me to level up and feel good about myself, right? But it comes back to the basis of the relationship, the foundation of the relationship. Do you both think you're the best possible option for each other? And do you truly love each other? Because when you love someone, you actually enjoy their flaws and you love them. And I'm not saying you can't be patient and be kind. I think there's a lot of content online being like, well, if you struggle, you X, Y, Z, then I'm going to leave you. And it's like, guys, like, yeah, sure. I think the idea of dating in abundance is very important, but also realizing like you have to be forgiving of your partner, right? And if that's not reciprocated, then that might be an issue on you for um, not vetting the woman properly. And I think having a terrible person in your life is devastating. In the same way, there are evil women, there are evil men. There's some good girls out there that got completely screwed by bad boys and you can say whatever else, it's their fault. But I'm like, I don't know. Be young and naive in the same way when I was 16, 17, I got my heart broken by very malicious girls. You just don't know, right? If you hold yourself to a high standard and you're not really participating in the world of the promiscuous and evil culture, whatever you wanna say it, I think it's pretty easy to get screwed because if you come in naive and wholesome, and you believe in the nuclear family and traditional I don't know, values and um, you enter this world, sometimes that's not reflected properly. And to find a partner that actually loves that is on you. You know, for me at least, I think marriage is right, right? In the end, I would wanna have a kids and I wanna have family and that's on me. And I think a lot of, uh, some of my haters on here says that's, that's beta, that's fake. And I'm like, but it makes me happy. You know, I'm truly happy and I have an amazing friend group. I have a really amazing girl and I really love who I am and try my best and I'll do my best to support my family. And my mom and brother get along with her very, very well. And that makes, brings me so much joy. And you gotta find what makes you truly happy, right? I think if you try to chase and use someone else's frame and base your entire relationship off what they think and their perspective versus finding what do I truly want? I think that's gonna lead to failure. Really define what you want and what your relationship wants to look like. I know there's a lot of content online saying you need to date like 10, 12 girls and not be monogamous and just keep moving on. But the thing is, if that makes you happy, I'm like, fuck, okay, I can't really say anything, but that doesn't really bring me any joy. It doesn't. Um, I've done it and it just does not feel that great. And for me, at least, I'd like to just have someone where I can just have an intimacy and have someone that can just be there for me at the end of the day. And I'm not treating her like my mother, okay? I treat her as my partner, as a spouse, as a girlfriend, soon to be fiance, by the way. And I expect myself to be the man in the relationship. I'm not going in there with a thumb in my mouth saying like, oh, I can't handle this. I'm not bitching and moaning to her. I think there's a very healthy way of bringing up some things that you're struggling with and being like, hey, I had a really rough day. Just give me some space and just let's talk through this, right? And hey, no matter what happens, I'll be okay. I'm in kind of a funk right now, but you know, in due time, I'll get over it. And that's a difference versus just bitching and moaning about being like, damn, I hate my manager. I hate this, you know, they're taking advantage of me. I hate my coworkers and it's like, no one likes someone who bitches and moans, and I think it's a very unattractive trait as a man. It's a very unattractive trait as a man to just bitch and moan and be negative. I'm not saying you can't express you know, your opinion on things, but there's a time and way to do that, and that's on you. But you have to understand that, yes, if you want a relationship based on material things, that's fucking super conditional. You know, while I really was searching for an unconditional relationship to an extent, right? I don't think it's like 100%, I don't know. But I know that my partner loves me, and I have to keep being the best version of myself just for this relationship. And sure, maybe, you know, maybe I'm wrong about this whole thing, but it seems to be really working and I'm truly, truly happy. You know, I'm, I, I definitely enjoy where I'm at and, and just trusted myself in this process. I know it's so easy to get lost in the sauce and read so much content online and being like, how do I even date? Like, are all women evil or all men evil as well? And I'm like, you really have to find what works for you. I think there is some legitimacy and the whole idea of hypergamy, right? I think you have to address that and be like, cool, there might be really, really shallow women out there. Okay. I think there's some really, really, really shallow men out there as well. And can you blame both sides? Like, I don't know, maybe one side has more of a responsibility, but I don't know. Maybe that's not for me to say, that's maybe for someone else to say. But I think the whole idea of being like, look, you want a relationship, a healthy relationship, it's probably based on some conditions on some level, but, also having someone who really cares about you and gives you patience and gives you the benefit of the doubt is also very real. The truth is finding a partner that actually loves you 
and treats you well, as well as you putting in the work, right? Everyone talks about like, oh, is my partner gonna love me and put in all this work? And I'm like, what are you actually gonna do? Don't be an idiot. If you're doing everything possible to become better and then your partner is not doing jack shit and then she's like pulling away from you and it's like, look, this is a team. A relationship is a team. You guys are a unit. You're a cohesive unit. And when you are getting better, the other person is getting better and you strive for each other to grow and learn right? And get more mature. That's the point of a relationship. If you get in a relationship and you become more immature, what's the fucking point? That's not a good partner. But you have to use your brain, guys. If you're putting in all this damn work for yourself and your benefit partners from it, great. And if she treats you with respect and she loves you more, cool. But if she's pulling away and she's not doing anything herself, that's on you to make the judgment call me and like, hey, I'm not a workhorse. You're not doing jack shit to get better. What is this, right? And I'm not saying like, you can't like be patient with your partner. I think it's important. Having your criteria, your mission, your purpose stated, being like, I wanna be the best version of myself and I want you to grow. And if you're both on board, hell yeah. But if your partner is not ready for it, you gotta find someone else or that's not the right person for you. And you have to use your own brain to make the judgment call on that. You can't watch your videos and be like, I don't know. Are they right and I'm wrong? You have to make the call for yourself and learn. Life is the best teacher. You can read all the books, all the forums, all the videos, but at the end of the day, you have to go out and live and learn and fall on your own fucking face to learn these lessons. And I think learning from others is important, but there's some things you can't learn without experiencing it. I think heartbreak is one of those and finding a healthy partner for you. We are all so different. For myself, I don't really wanna classify myself as like a traditional Chad, like, you know? Um, yeah, like I, I, that's not me, right? I was never a huge like sports jock, right? I like working out, taking care of myself, doing yoga, but I'm not some dude, you know, who cuts wood in the forest, you know, drinks some IPAs and stuff like that. That's not who I am, but I found these things to work for myself. And these are my nuances. And some girls will not be attracted to me. I'm highly aware of that. I'm not saying that I can walk in every room and be like, oh damn, like this person will fall in love with me. No, I think everyone has their own definition. There's no universal definition of alpha. I don't think so. And there's some people you may be view as beta, but to some people, they might be alpha. It's one of these things and being like, look, what can you do in your life to level up and things you want to do? What type of relationship do you want? If you want to believe in the whole idea of like, I need a Lamborghini, flex my money, wear Gucci and go to the club and get like the stereotypical, like, you know, blonde girl. Cool. If that makes you happy, like go for it. But that doesn't make me happy. I'm more of like a mellow guy and that's what is real. <laughs> like this is actually real life. You know, I don't want to have like 10 girls on a yacht just driving around and I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want that. Maybe some people say I'm not capable of that. I'm like, cool. No, that's, that's, that's on you guys, but I'm generally content and I'm going to keep working really hard and for myself and I want to improve this life. And I really hope my partner benefits from this as well as my family. So to summarize, is a relationship conditional? Fuck yeah, it is. Can a relationship be unconditional as well? Also true. Is it rarer? Hell yeah. I think finding more conditional relationships is way higher than finding unconditional relationship. But don't treat your partner like your mom. <laughs> if you wanna further discuss this, please email me at bedroomtalksconsult at gmail.com. Send me an email, we'll book something, put it on the schedule, and it's quite affordable. If you wanna see what I'm up to, follow me on Instagram at m.deep20. Everything's in the description below. As always, I wish you the best. Namaste.